Hi there Thor owners. Today in your 2020 Thor Miramar, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install Sumo Springs for the front axle. Before we start our install, we're going to hit our test course and get a baseline of how the motorhome handles. And then once we complete our installation, we're going to re-hit the test course and make a comparison. We're going to start by going into our bump section here and it's going to be uneven, so it's going to simulate a pothole. And this is really going to affect sway. I do expect there to be some improvements after we install our components. It does got some pretty good sway right now, even with a small bump, we do rock back and forth pretty good. And this can lead to things like your cabinet doors opening up and stuff falling out in your motorhome. Next, we're gonna be going into the even bump section. And this is going to be similar to pulling into a garage or in your driveway or going over a speed bump. And this is your forward and back movement. And when we go up here in the front, it's fairly soft. The suspension doesn't feel too bad. There's not too much oscillation. But once we get our components on, I do expect we're gonna see some minor improvements there as well. When we head into our slalom section now, and we're gonna start getting her going back and forth, and boy, you can feel the sway already. You can already hear some items starting to roll around inside the motorhome. So once we get some suspension enhancements on here, that's definitely gonna help out with our sway here and minimize those things going around. It's also gonna help us keep control of our motorhome a little bit better. It wasn't too terribly bad, but it did have some sway and those things can start to get out of hand on you. Now that we've got our components installed, we're gonna hit our test course again. We're gonna start with the uneven bump section again. Oh wow, there's already definitely a noticeable difference. The bounciness is quite a bit reduced. We don't have near the sway that we did before and our steering was just a little bit easier to maintain control of here. We don't feel it as much as we did before when we hit those bumps. Now we're gonna go into the even bump section now. And this one, we did feel a little bit of improvement there when we come down over the bump. It does feel like we've got a little bit more cushion than we did before. It's not quite as stiff, but there's not a huge amount of difference there. As we go into our slalom section, when we start to perform those evasive maneuvers, it really gets the motorhome rocking. Now front sumo springs are gonna help out, but I do highly recommend a set of rear sumo springs to really help out with sway and everything else. Since the fronts are a split design, they don't do as much for sway as the rear sets do. But there is some noticeable differences here. As we're going into it, we are rocking still some, but I don't hear all of our pots and pans flying out before like we had when we didn't have them on there. And this is what our Sumo Springs look like when they're installed. I do still have the vehicle lifted up, so you can see that these are a two-piece design. And the purpose of this is we can have unlimited suspension travel here in the front. This way we don't have any restrictions when the suspension wants to move up to where this is holding it down. This is only gonna provide us with downward assistance, and that's going to help support the weight here in the front and smooth out our ride. In addition to making it smoother, it's also going to help make our vehicle safer because it's going to help reduce sway as well. This is going to make it easier to maintain control of your motorhome when driving down the road. And overall, you and your passengers are all going to just enjoy a higher quality ride and you're going to have more energy when you get to your destination because none of you are going to be holding on because the ride is going to be smoother than it was before. Each spring is going to be constructed of a microcellular urethane that's gonna be UV resistant, as well as resistant against road grimes, dirt, debris, and oils, so you don't have to worry about anything splashing up on the road, deteriorating your spring. It's a custom fit design for your motorhome. The brackets that come included with it have all the hardware that you'll need, and there's no drilling required. Why don't you follow along with me, and we'll show you how easy these are to get installed. We'll begin our installation underneath the front of the vehicle. It will be easier if you lift it up because we do need some extra room to be able to get our sumo springs in place between the frame and the axle. And one of the easiest ways to do this is to just use your leveling jacks to lift up on the front end. Once you've got it lifted up, you want to make sure you place jack stands underneath the frame to support the vehicle because we don't want to just trust our hydraulic jacks holding all the weight. We're going to start our installation over on the driver's side. We'll need to remove our jounce bumper as the sumo spring is going to go right in the same location as our jounce bumper here. All the procedures we're going to perform over here on the driver's side are going to be exactly the same on the passenger side. The only difference is going to be right here on this jounce bumper. There's a nut on top here that holds 
it in. And over on the passenger side, it's a weld nut. So you don't need to have a wrench up here to hold the top. You just can use your ratchet down here on the bottom. And we're just gonna loosen this up. We're using a 13 millimeter socket to go up inside the jounce bumper. You're probably gonna need a little extension like this. You'll make sure you save the nut and the bolt here for our jounce bumper because we are gonna be reusing them. But we do not need our jounce bumper. We can now take our upper bracket and we're gonna get it installed. On the top side of our bracket, you're gonna have these little ears right there and those are gonna butt up against the side of the frame. The hole here in the center is going to line up with the hole where we removed our jounce bumper. So we're going to take that jounce bumper bolt we removed and we're going to slide it up through the middle. We're then going to slide this up through the bottom of the frame. And then we're just going to loosely install the nut on top. You're going to have two hex head bolts that are short. These are all gonna be the same size little hex heads here that come in your kit. So take two of them. You're gonna drop them down through the holes here in the bracket. And we just gotta line those ears up so they butt up against the bottom of the frame there. And we're just gonna tighten this down. We can now take our sumo spring. For the upper one, you're gonna have four holes in the top of it. We're gonna be using the two holes that are spaced furthest apart. and the bolts that we had dropped down in here, we're just going to hold it up, line up those further ones apart, and thread these right into it. Then you can finish tightening them up with your wrench. We're gonna be using a 15 millimeter wrench for these bolts. We can now move on to our lower bracket, and we do need to do some pre-assembly. This is our lower spring. It's got a single bolt hole here in the bottom. Our lower bracket here has this little L portion. This goes towards the rear of the vehicle and the raised portion here with the ears is towards the front of the vehicle. We want to make sure we're using the slot that's towards the inside of the vehicle, towards the center of the vehicle. And it's the same size bolt that we used up top for the upper bracket. So we're going to slide this through that inside hole since we're working on the driver's side. This makes us the inner hole. And we're just going to thread our lower spring right onto there. We don't want to make it real tight because we want to be able to, to move this around like that. So we're just going to go about tan tight just enough to the point where we can still slide it back and forth so we can make our adjustments. Now that we've got it on there, we can set it in place. Lift your assembly up above your leaf spring. And the ears here are going to sit on each side of our leaf spring and they're going to butt right up against the little plate here at the top. You can see our sumo spring is going to line up underneath of it, and we're just going to adjust that later. But now we need to get this secured, so we're going to grab the carriage bolts that come in our kit. The shorter carriage bolts are going to be our rear two bolts, and they're going to drop down through the square openings on each side of the leaf spring. And then the longer carriage bolts are going to be the front two. They're going to drop down through the square holes here at the front of our bracket. Underneath each of our carriage bolts, we're going to have a strap that we're going to put in place got holes in it that slides right over the carriage bolts. And what I do is you can kind of give this a little bit of a twist like that. That'll keep your bolts from pushing back up and it'll make it easier to start the locking nuts on them. You also want to pay attention to the orientation of the strap we've put into place. The U-shaped channel here is going to be facing just like a U. So the opening is going to be down and you're going to have two points of contact against the bottom of your leaf spring. We're then going to repeat this for the U-bolts here at the front. We can then go back and tighten these down with a 15 millimeter socket. We want to go back and forth to make sure we tighten down each strap evenly. All that's left now is to just line up our lower sumo spring with our upper and then we're just going to take our 15 millimeter wrench to come in here through the bottom and tighten it back down. You're likely going to have to move from slot to slot around here to find the right spot where your wrench is going to fit on the bolt because you're only going to get a small throw out of it with each one. With the driver's side all tightened down we can repeat the same procedures over here on the passenger side. You can see here why we don't have a nut because you can't access the inside of the frame here to hold it so that's why this one's got a weld nut so you can just go straight underneath to remove that factory bolt over here on this passenger side. And that completes our installation of sumo springs on the front axle 
on our 2020 Thor Miramar.